This is Dr. Coucher. I will be presenting to you the toddler and the family. Um, you need to know bolded words. Uh, if there's words in italics, uh, pay close attention to boxes and tables. Look at your guidelines and care plans, etc. in the chapters. Now, I've tried to remove as many pictures as possible for the uploaded slides. So you've got pictures on, on mine, though. The terrible twos. If you've had children or you've been around children at ages 12 to 36 months, you know that this can be a very, very trying time. Um, you have to attempt to control the environment, uh, uh, or the sorry, the, the toddlers attempt to control the environment and people uh, by throwing temper tantrums, uh, negativism. Uh, the word no can mean many things for them. Um, this is, a, it, uh, it's an intense time of exploration. Uh, it's an important time though for intellectual and uh, uh, developmental growth towards autonomy. But again, it can be such a very challenging, challenging age. Their growth, height, uh, uh, head and chest circumference start to slow down. Their weight gain is about four to six pounds a year, height about three inches a year. Birth weight should be quadrupled by about age two and a half. Their anterior fontanelle closes by 12 to 18 months. Growth is step-like rather than, than linear. Their head and chest usually become equal in size by one to two years old. Um, the chest increases in size and it surpasses the head during the toddler years. After age two, the chest circumfer circumference exceeds the uh, abdomen and it gives the taller a taller, leaner look. However, they still have that little pot belly due to, to weak abdominal muscles. Uh, the legs are slightly bowed uh, and that's because they have a, a heavy trunk and an abdomen that they're carrying around. The adult height uh, is about twice that of a two-year-old. Uh, look into your baby book and see how tall you were at two and see if uh, you're twice that height now, just for fun. Visual, visual acuity of 20 to 40, uh, 2040 is acceptable at this age. Uh, persistent strabismus requires intervention to prevent amblyopia. Uh, depth perception is better, but still a lot of uh, falls related to less motor coordination. Hearing, smell, taste, and touch uh, continue to develop. Um, they are less likely to try new foods because they don't, they just don't like the taste. The appearance uh, could be a textural thing, or they have some smell uh, preferences. All senses are used to explore the environment. They will touch, taste, and shake it, throw it, and put everything in their mouth. Uh, makes aspiration and poisoning a very, very increased risk, which we'll talk about that towards the end of the lecture. So the maturation of uh, systems. Most physiologic symptom, uh, systems are relatively mature by the end of toddlerhood. Respiratory and heart rate slows, blood pressure increases, body temp is maintained. The respiratory tract, the upper respiratory infections, otitis media and tonsillitis are very common. Uh, because of the throat and ear structures, they are still short and straight. And the lymphoid tissue of the tonsils and adenoids are enlarged. The volume of the respiratory tract increases and respirations do remain abdominal. The renal system, it's maturing, uh, it's able to conserve fluid in times of stress, it decreases risk of dehydration for these toddlers. The bladder capacity increases, they can retain their urine longer. With their GI system, they have increased acidity of gastric juices. Uh, this is protective and it, and it, it helps to destroy bacteria. Uh, increased stomach capacity allows for three meals a day. They still need their little snacks. Uh, prominent changes in the GI system, they are it's physiologically able to control elimination uh, and that's because of the myelination of the spinal cord at this point is complete. They're able to control their sphincter between 18 and 24 months but they might not be cognitively ready to go. 
Defense mechanisms of the skin are intact because of phagocytosis, and, in more, and, and it's more efficient and product, uh, productive of, for the antibodies that are well established at that point. However, we do see an increase in illnesses when they enter preschool or daycare, and this is because they have increased exposure to pathogens and poor hygiene. Uh, hand hygiene may not be that, that great at this point in time. Um, I know that my grandkids go to uh, a, a preschool and that's the first thing that they have to do is go and wash their hands. And I was really proud of that and, and happy about that, that that is the, the first thing that they're taught. Before you touch anything, as soon as you walk in the room, you wash your hands. Gross and, and fine motor development, the locomotion is refined um, with coordination and equilibrium. They might, may walk alone by 12 to 13 months with a wide gait for balance. At 18 months, they'll try running, but they'll fall easily, so you got to think in terms of safety with them. At two years, they go up and down stairs with both feet on one step, kick a ball without falling. At two and a half years, you can expect them to jump on both feet and stand on one foot for a couple of seconds and take a few steps on their tiptoes. At three years, they'll stand on one foot and walk on tiptoes and climb stairs with alternating feet. And they're very proud to tell you, look, I can jump. Fine motor development, uh, they'll have improved manual dexterity. At 12 months, they grasp uh, very small objects, but they're unable to release them at will. At 15 months, they're throwing object, objects to the floor and they can hold a spoon, but it rotates before it gets to the mouth. So um, just think about as that spoon is coming up to their mouth, it's rotating and they end up dumping it off. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, they also build uh, towers of two blocks and that's at 15 months. At 18 months, they'll throw a ball overhanded without falling and then they can also manage their spoon better. 24 months, they'll turn pages of the book one at a time. Uh, they'll turn doorknobs, so we have to teach moms and dads to think in terms of safety with doorknobs. At 36 months, they'll build a tower of at least eight blocks, and they'll have some really good hand-finger coordination. It, it improves in all areas, in their play, in their dressing, their language, comprehension, their response to discipline, and their social interaction. Propensity, though, for injury does increase. So again, we have to think in terms of safety when we are talking to these moms and dads or taking care of these toddlers in the healthcare setting. This is a chart. Please note this table might not be the exact table that's in your text. However, nothing really has changed on this. This just breaks down a few of the things that we were talking about on the previous page. For psychosocial development, uh, they have differentiation of self from others, particularly the mother. They have toleration of separation from the parent, the ability to delay gratification, the control over bodily functions, acquisition of socially acceptable behavior, verbal means of communication. They have ability to interact with others in a less egocentric manner. <coughs> Parents need to be consistent and reliable to help gain trust in the first year to help the toddler move on to autonomy. It's important to have developed a basic trust to move on. Uh, they must learn to give up a, a dependence for independence. Eric, in stage of development, they must develop a sense of autonomy while overcoming a sense of shame and doubt. Negativism, you're going to see this often, guys. I'm going to talk about it often through here. And it could be even tested over. Attempting to express their will and control uh, over others. They'll go from temper tantrums to wanting to be cuddled. Uh, you know, they're just very, have a lot of mood swings. This can be very challenging for a parent or caregiver. Need to learn to deal with it and not always give in to the toddler. It does not teach the toddler how to respond to others when we do. Ritualization uh, provides a sense of comfort with sameness and reliability. Reason for hospitalization causes such uh, distress in a toddler. As the toddler develops, they deal with their uh, id, ego, and superego. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. You've all had psych. 
I think y'all had psychology as a as, as a prereq. I, I can't remember. I know that I did. But we we talk about the id, ego, and super ego in psych. Um, the id controls the impulses. It learns socially acceptable behavior. The ego is the reason or common sense. It learns to tolerate delayed gratification. And the super ego is our conscience. Morals, we learn to trust and differentiate uh, themselves from others. They're aware of the ability to achieve and to fail. De this develops during the preschool years, though, not during the toddler years. That's important to know. The super ego does not develop during the preschool years. But I can't talk about the other two without talking about the third one. So Piaget's cognitive development. Um, is a cognitive process that develop rapidly between 12 and 24 months. The sensory motor phase, it's a tertiary, tertiary circular reactions, and this happens at 13 months to 18 months. What happens is they develop further differentiation of oneself from objects. They have the ability to venture away from the parent and tolerate longer periods of separation. Uh, they have awareness of a casual relationship between two events. They'll flip a light switch off and on for long periods of time and be excited each time the light goes off and on, or, uh, but will not transfer that knowledge that the next light, <laughs> light switch will do the same. Uh, they will have to investigate each and every time. They'll also do an unsafe activity over and over again, not really realizing it will hurt them each and every time. They begin to categorize data into distinct classes and subclasses. They see a basket as a basket, does not see a toy basket that's, that's different from a trash basket. They may, may put their toys in the trash or dig in the trash uh, basket thinking their toys are in there. They're unable to judge what is appropriate and inappropriate. They do have object permanence. The object is still there even though they can uh, that it cannot be seen. Uh, it sees a parent uh, put an item in a cabinet and will try to look for it. So we want to put things high, uh, high where they can't get it, um, like Tylenol. It, let's face it, they think it's yummy. Uh, so you give them Tylenol or Motrin, it, it tastes like it tastes like a, something sweet and good. Uh, they're going to watch where you put it, and they may try to climb up on the cabinet after it. So we need to think about putting these things in locked cabinets. Um, Active experimentation, it's used to achieve previously unachievable tasks. They'll experiment with hitting different items with the toy to get different responses. Drum goes boom boom, table bang bang, and brother ouch. Applying knowledge to new situations goes along with experimentation. They learn where things fit in their world. Uh, they can put a small ball in their mouth but not a, a beach ball. They'll learn spatial relationships and recognize uh, different shapes and their relationship. And, you know, my, they'll place a, a round uh, object into the round hole. This is a, an example of the tertiary circular reactions. Um, it just is, it's just a, 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 a little graph to show you what happens. Invention of new means through uh, mental combinations. Uh, they'll, this is the final sensory motor stage at 19 to 24 months. The object permanence is one of the most dramatic achievements. They will actively search for a hidden object in several possible hiding places. Uh, they'll infer cause when only experiencing effect. They'll conclude the object could be hidden in any of the places they look, even if they only saw it hidden in the initial place. They'll have domestic mimicry, uh, so imitation of behaviors. They'll identify with the same sex parent. Little girls will identify with mother and want to cook, and little boys will identify with daddy and want to mow the yard. Uh, toys will help with pretend. Uh, they'll have a concept of time is, is starting to evolve, but it's still very early. Sense of time in terms of anticipation, memory, and limited ability to wait. Uh, there is limited attention span. Mom will return after nap. Daddy will come home after Sesame Street goes off. They're unable to take turns until about the age of three.
During the pre-operational phase, this is two to seven years. Um, it, 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 there's a, the pre-conceptional phase is, is a subdivision. Uh, so we're going to go with the ages two to four years right now, of course, because we're talking about the toddler. Pre-operational thought implies that children can think in terms of operations, ability to manipulate objects in relation to one another in a logical manner. <coughs> it's the transition between self-satisfying behavior and socialized relationships. Problem solving is based on what they see and hear and not what they remember. As language, language skills increase, they ask why and they ask how a lot. Um, egocentrism uh, only sees how their own perspectives. They can't see another person's perspective. They don't realize uh, negative behavior hurts others because it doesn't actually hurt them. Uh, animism gives life-like qualities to inanimate objects. The child scolds the chair for making them fall. Irreversibility, that's the inability to reverse actions. They have magical thoughts. Their thoughts are powerful and can cause events to happen. They have the inability to conserve. They can't understand mass, can change size, shape, and volume without changing original mass. The same volume in a large glass looks like more than if it's in a small glass. Transductive reasoning involves inferences from one specific thing to another. And global organization, the reasoning that, cha reasoning that changing any part of the whole changes the entire whole. Centration focuses on one aspect rather than considering all the possibilities that could be with it. Again, this is just a box. The, uh, it may not be the same in your text, but the content is the same with Erickson, Piaget, and Freud. I would look at some of these things. Spiritual development. It's an evolution of spirituality. It often parallels cognitive development. Family and environment influence, influences a child's perception of the world. Toddlers learn about God through the words and actions of those closest to them. Toddlers have a vague idea of God. Uh, spiritual routines can be comforting, like folding their hands in prayer or prayers before meals or bed. We have a development of body image that parallels also with cognitive development. In the second year, it rec they recognize self in the mirror. They refer to their self by, by, uh, by name and then pronoun. The child refers to body parts by name, so parents need to use accurate names. And I think we're probably all guilty of, of using different names for different parts. Um, and they're going to probably start exploring their own body. The child recognizes words used to describe appearance. So parents need to avoid negative labels about physical appearance, such as fat, chubby legs, or skinny arms. <coughs> the child recognizes gender differences by age two. Toddlers will pro uh, protest intrusive exam examinations, such as examining the ears, mouth, axillary temp. Even if they did not before, it does not hurt, but intrusive of their personal space. They don't like it at this point. They're going to protest having parts of their body, feces, flushed. Exploration of genitalia is very common. Genital fonding can occur and can be pleasurable to the child. Parental reaction will influence the, child, the toddler's attitude. Reaction should be accepting, not critical. May have to explain this type of behavior is not done in public. Gender roles are understood by the toddler at this point. Playing house or other uh, imaginative play happens. Gender identity, a sense of femaleness or maleness. And this is usually formed by age three years. Attitudes about affectionate behavior is also formed by watching adults around them. The major task of toddlerhood is differentiation of self from mother or significant others. Differentiation is in two phases separation and individual, individual, 
<laughs> individualization. Woo, I just butchered that name, that word. Separation, a toddler emerges from symbi a symbiotic fusion with the mother. Individualization, achievements that mark the child's expressions of personal characteristics. Because due to object permanence, toddlers realize their parents still exist when they aren't there, and strangers are less of a threat to them. Repetition, such as when toddlers go to bed without parents and awake to find them there, reinforces the ability to separate from their parents for short periods. Reproachment, separates from, uh, this is separates from parent and returns for reassurance and to make sense of their experiences. A parent's uh, inappropriate response can cause insecurity and confusion. Transitional objects, their favorite toy, their favorite blanket, what have you, provide security and decreases anxiety for the toddler when separated from the parent under new stress or tired. Let them have that object uh, for their security. Brief separation also allows the parents to rest and recharge to deal with frustrations of parenting the busy toddler and those crazy, crazy, terrible twos. So language, uh, level of comprehension and ability to understand increases. Their comprehension is much greater than the number of words a, uh, a toddler, can, toddler can actually say. At age one year, the child uses one word sentences, up, down, um, go. By age two years, the child uses multi-word sentences, all gone, mama go bye-bye. And studies show that TV before 12 months and uh, greater than two hours a, a day will equal some language delay. Uh, with the adult, child conversation increases their language development, so talk to them on a regular basis. Gestures such as pointing fade as the language development actually increases. Their personal and social behavior at this time, uh, toddlers develop skills of independence that may result in a determined, strong-willed, and uh, some can probably produce some volatile behaviors. The skills of independence include feeding, playing, dressing, and undressing self. Toddlers develop concern for f the feelings of others. Age-appropriate discipline contributes to a healthy social and emotional development. We want to give positive reinforcement. Uh, we want to redirect. And timeout may be appropriate for uh, toddlers. Play is the work of a child. It enhances physical and psychosocial development. Interaction with others becomes more important. They'll have parallel play where they play beside, beside other kids, but not with others. Um, Imitation, they'll repeat what others do or sounds they make. One child claps their hands, the other imitates by uh, clapping their hands. Tactile play, they'll use touch to learn as they play. Uh, so they like sand and bubbles and clay. Um, selection of appropriate toys, toys that, that foster thinking and interaction with adults. Active play instead of computers or videos should be really implemented with the toddler. Um, and they need a safe and age-appropriate toys. There is no universal age to start toilet training or absolute deadline to have it completed. It really is up to the child and the parents. Uh, <clears throat> for toilet training to be successful, you have to have a couple of things. You have to have physical readiness and you have to have mental readiness. In physical, you have to have the voluntary control of the sphincters. This usually occurs at 18 to 24 months. The ability to stay dry for two hours and decreased number of wet diapers, waking up from the nap dry and regular bowel movements. Gross motor skills of sitting, walking, and squatting. And they also need fine motor skills to remove clothing. The mental readiness, they have to recognize the urge to defecate or urinate. Uh, they have to have verbal and nonverbal communication to express need to defecate and urinate. 
cognitive skills to imitate appropriate behavior and follow the directions. You also have to have psychological readiness and parental readiness. Uh, psychological readiness expresses the willingness to please the parents. Uh, able to sit on the toilet for five to ten minutes without fussing or getting off. Curiosity about adult, adults or older siblings' toilet habits. Impatient with so soiled or wet diapers. And a desire to be changed immediately. They're going to start trying to take them off. Parental readiness recognizes the child's level of readiness, willing to invest time required for toilet training, and absence of family stress or change. So if they're moving, it's probably not a good time. Bowel training may be accomplished before the bladder training due to a regularity of BMs and a stronger urge. Some techniques. Easy off clo clothing, training pants such as pull-ups, a potty chair, chair where feet can touch the floor, a floor. It gives them a feeling of security and assisting in defecation. Um, or you put a portable seat on a regular toilet, but give them a stool that they can prop their feet on. A parent needs to stay with the child, allow the child to see the toilet flushed, practice sessions no more than five to eight minutes. Use sanitary habits after each se session by wiping and washing hands. Uh, use positive reinforcement. Do praise. Uh, make a sticker chart. Going to the bathroom with a parent or older sibling, uh, they'll do what they see. Uh, daycare needs to be informed and should support toilet training for consistency. Nighttime dryness takes longer due to immature sleep cycle that prevents a child from awakening in time to urinate. Children who have not achieved nighttime dryness by age six will likely need intervention, but uh, they're definitely we need to investigate. Sibling rivalry becomes a big thing. Uh, it's it, it's natural to have jealousy and resentment of children to uh, to a new child in the family. The toddler does not resent the baby, but the changes that the baby brings. Uh, it's loss of ritualism and control. Parents now show love and attention where it may have been solely on them before. The uh, usual routine, routine is disrupted. May lose their crib or they may lose their room. What do you do for that? Well, we have to prep. A good time to prepare a child for infant's arrival is when it's apparent. The toddler is aware of the pregnancy and changes are being made in anticipation for the new arrival. Be realistic about what life will be like with, uh, after the infant's arrival. The baby will not be a new playmate when brought home. Um, talk about activities that will come uh, with the infant, feeding, changing, diapers, bathing, and dressing. Emphasize routines that will stay the same. Make time for regular story time, you know, things like that. With an older child, the dad may spend quality time while mom is occupied with the infant. Introduce the toddler to an infant if they have not been exposed to them before. So if you have somebody that's had a baby or we are, we are talking to a parent and we want to teach them, if let's introduce them to infants. If... Uh, if they're in a daycare, maybe they could do that. If you have a friend that's just had a baby, maybe you can do it like that. Let them see what an infant is all about. Next, we want to minimize stressors for the toddler, such as moving the toddler to a toddler or big bed um, well in advance of the birth. It, it needs to, you, you don't, don't do it right before. <coughs> Explain the pregnancy. Simple pictures of the uterus and the fetus. Feeling the baby move. Sibling classes may also be helpful. Visitors, many visitors bring gifts and show attention to the infant, but not the toddler. Ter parents may alert visitors to show some attention to that toddler. Acting out, stress can cause a toddler to hit the infant, pull the bottle out of the mouth, insist the baby be sent back. Do not leave the toddler with the infant unattended. Uh, may, they may revert to some regression.
Tantrums are an indication of inability to control their emotions and they are quite common. They may escalate when they're tired, hungry, sick, or frustrated. Toddlers may assert their independence by violently uh, objecting to discipline, lying on the floor, kicking their feet, screaming as loud as they possibly can, holding their breath. They may even faint from holding their breath. <coughs> Respiratory control center will take over and the child will breathe again, though it can be frightening for the parents, as you can imagine. Parent education. Uh, best approach to temper tantrums is to ignore the behavior as long as the behavior is not, as long as they're not going to be injured um, to for themselves or others. Also offer options instead of all or none. Pick your battles, what is important and what is not. Comfort the child when gain, get, they gain control, but do not give in to demands. Praise their positive behavior. Consistency in situation and response to behavior. Uh, sameness before bedtime, brush teeth, one story, prayers, lights out, bedtime. Make sure all caregivers are on the same page. Uh, can't play me, mommy, and fun daddy. That will use it against you. Uh, starting at 18 months, timeouts will work well. After the tantrum is over, focus their attention on a favorite toy, book, etc. Negativism. I told you, I'm not. It's not over with. The the loud, resounding no. Uh, this is not an expression of being stubborn or insolent, but necessary assertion of self-control. It should start to subside around the time for kindergarten. Uh, decrease opportunity to answer no, as in, are you ready for bed? Because they're going to say no. Other options, not many, or, or it will uh, confuse them. So only two. Uh, do you want to take your medicine with juice or milk? See, that's not, that is not giving them the option to say no. Do you want to wear the red or the blue pajamas? Regression happens. It, it just does. The retreat of one's present pattern of functioning to past levels of behavior. It usually occurs with discomfort or stress, such as a new baby in the home, a hospitalization, or separation, as if when mom goes back to work. Um, example, increased uh, dependency, the refusal to use the potty chair, temper tantrums, demand for battle loss of newly learned motor, language, social, and cognitive skills, Parent, parental education, ignore regressed activity, praise existing patterns of uh, appropriate behavior, usually returns to normal behavior, uh, and then they're able to cope with all the stressors once again. Now, we have to promote optimal health during the childhood. You also need to be looking um, in, your, uh, in your books. You don't need to, you, we need to be looking in our ATI uh, at some of the nutrition chapters. At 12 to 18 months, growth slows and needs, uh, uh, and needs decrease. Uh, the caloric and nutrient ones still need a balanced diet with adequate protein should be taking two to three meals a day with two healthy snacks you want smaller portions the decreased nutritional need and decreased appetite is known as a physiologic anorexia and this happens at about 18 months they become so picky they're fussy eaters and they have some very strong preferences taste and texture and appearance can get to them may not eat a food just because someone in the family won't eat it may eat one day and won't the next it becomes very frustrating for parents they're afraid their child will starve offer planned nutritious snacks the child also becomes aware of non-nutritive functions of food the pleasure the social aspect and the control of refusing food Ritualism, may, they may want the same dish, same cup, same spoon, etc. They may refuse food on a different plate. They may want the same food for every meal. Uh, you never know with toddlers. 
uh, providing a variety of in, uh, increases uh, sensory stimulation and need, that's needed to learn to eat different foods that have different textures. Textures are really big. Nutritional counseling, preventing childhood obesity, because we have so much of it going on in our U.S. right now. Eating habits are formed by two to three years old. So do not use food as a reward to appease them. Do not force a toddler to eat or make mealtime unpleasant. Toddlers may need to eat earlier than the, than the rest of the family, but should be eating the same food as the rest of the family. It, uh, large portions overwhelm the toddler. So one tablespoon of solid food per year of age or one quarter to one third of the adult portion. Mastication, the chewing may not uh, be effective. So let's avoid hot dogs, grapes, and popcorn, foods that could cause choking, unless you're going to cut these things up nice and tiny and small. We also want to make sure that we're promoting optimal uh continuing to promote the optimal health and following the dietary guidelines. Encourage a healthy diet and exercise to decrease obesity and cardiovascular risk factors. Want to decrease the daily intake of fat and sodium, increase their exercise. Give them a variety of fruits and vegetables, whole grains and low fat or no fat dairy products. They need iron, they need calcium, they need vitamins D and C. Uh, so what foods would you get these from? Uh, vegetarian diets increasing in popularity that uh, must plan well to assure adequate protein along with other essential vitamins and minerals. So we need uh, we also have complementary and alternative medicine, the use of folk medicine, herbs, prayer and massage therapy. Um, you know essential oils real is really big. Uh, many megavitamins and herbs are not proven safe for children, though. We have to, we have to give parents uh, some understanding of that. So sleep and activity. The total sleep decreases slightly during the second year, 11 to 12 hours a day, one nap a day. They reach the adult pattern of sleeping by age three to four. Sleep problems are common and come and go due to fears and awareness of separation. Same bedtime each night is, uh, you, you should promote that. Uh, bedtime snacks, something light. Quiet activity, one hour before bedtime, such as reading. Avoid stimulation. No rough housing, uh, no action TV, no computer games. Get their comfort objects, blankets, stuffed animals, dolls, no TV in a child's room. Set limits, the number of stories, and the length of time for bedtime rituals. Dental health, we need regular dental examinations at this time. By six months of age or six months of eruption of first tooth, and also at least by, by 12 months old, at the very very least. Uh, they need removal of plaque. The most effective brushing is done by parents, but we may let toddlers start when the, and let the parent finish. You gotta give them some, some sense of autonomy that they can do this on their own. Uh, teeth should be brushed and flossed after each meal. If unable to brush, have the toddler swish and swallow. Toddlers may not be able to swish and spit. <laughs> <laughs> they do have a little trouble with that. So we want to give them nothing but water at night after brushing. Fluoride, no supplements before six months old and only necessary if fluoride is not adequate in the water. Some dietary factors, food and drinks with complex carbs are highly uh, carcinogenic. Uh, raisins, sugar, uh, sorry, not carcinogenic, karyogenic, oh Lord. Raisins, sugar, molasses, corn syrup, breads, potatoes, pasta. Um, early childhood caries, uh, nursing caries or bottle mouth from allowing them to go to bed with a bottle or use a bottle of milk or sugary drink as a pacifier during the day. We want to eliminate these bedtime bottles or substitute with some water. Uh, otherwise, they're going to have caries so bad that all their teeth are going to end up coming out before they get their permanent teeth. 
They are so prone to accidents. Uh, they are curious, they explore, they have lack of understanding of cause and effect, and they don't know how to gauge danger. Uh, they also have poor depth perception. Non-accidental trauma, physical child abuse, toddlers at high risk due to their mobility and emotional development, that negativism and those temper tantrums. Motor vehicle safety, safety, MVA is the number one in accidental deaths after age of uh, one years. In age one year to four, it's related to lack of or improper use of car safety restraints. And I'm sure that we've all driven down the road and seen some of those. Car seat restraints, always read and follow the owner's manual. Up to two years old should be rear facing. Middle of the back seat, harnesses should fit securely. No add-ons such as blankets between the child and the restraints. After age two years old, they may be restrained in a forward facing car seat. Middle of the rear car, seat, car is, or the rear seat is still the best. But if you have more than one child who's in a car seat, of course, we know that that's not possible. Uh, motor vehicle related injuries or death, uh, getting run over or vehicular hyperthermia. We see so much of that on the news. I mean, <clears throat> uh, both of them where somebody is in their car and they're they're going to back up and they thought that their child was in the house and they when they back up, they, they run over their child. Uh, luckily, we all, most all vehicles have some backup cameras now, so we can hopefully see more of our surroundings. Uh, but vehicular hyperthermia is happening way too much. There's a lot of uh, new things I've seen with some cars that they're coming out with to help remember that your child is in the back seat. Drowning, uh, developed locomotion skills allows them to access bathtubs, swimming pools, hot tubs. Uh, lack of understanding of danger makes drowning a feasible threat. Death can occur in a matter of minutes. Uh, close adult supervision when near any water source, uh, inside or outside. Swimming lessons are most appropriate. Uh, water safety classes and fences around pools are good, but not necessarily sufficient. Burns is the second cause of death in girls one to four. Third cause of death in boys one to four. Uh, they have the ability to stretch, climb, and reach. So this is how that happens. We need to teach the parents the pot handle should be turned to the back of the stove. I, I, all of my grandchildren are older than this, but I, I tell you, I still turn my pots around. Guards in front of the heaters, fireplaces, and radiators. Other sources of burns should be kept at uh, uh, should be kept away and out of reach, like hot drinks, candles, cigarettes, irons um, for clothes or hair, and the hot water tap. Electrical burns, outlets should still be covered. Place furniture in front of it if, if possible. And you need to be careful of cords because they, they're going to put something in their mouth. You know, they're going to start biting on them. So sunburns, protective clothing, and sunscreen. We want an SPF of 15 or higher. Accidental poisoning, uh, uh, prescription drugs, or over-the-counter drugs, uh, plants, household products. Toddlers are at high risk because they're curious, and they have the ability to open the child-proof containers. Uh, proper storage is very important. At high level, uh, we want locked cabinets. We want po to post poison control center phone number near their phone and inside the cabinets. Falls, constant supervision uh, is necessary due to their ability to climb and lack of understanding of danger. <coughs> Stairs, playgrounds, windows, cribs, bunk beds. Children under six should not sleep on top. Of bunk beds, high chairs, grocery carts, and chairs. Aspiration and suffocation, everything goes in their mouth. They're going to they're gonna aspirate on toys, foods, balloons, buttons, earrings. These can cause significant harm by either blocking the trachea or uh, piercing the airway. And also those little round, they look like button batteries. Uh, when children swallow those, they, they, it, 
it just it destroys their system. Uh, they can they're going to go into some critical being a critical condition in ICU from it. Um, I've read so many stories about this. Uh, you need to ha make sure the parents know to have carbon monoxide detectors and smoke detectors in all areas of the home. They can climb in and get trapped. Uh, so old refrigerators, ice chests, ovens, a toy box, we need to be aware of these things. They are going to can suffer bodily injury because they have a clumsy gait and they have frequent falls. Sharp, sharp objects should not be uh, they shouldn't be allowed to walk with anything sharp and pointed, like pencils, forks, scissors. Uh, firearms should be unloaded, have a trigger lock, and placed where the child cannot get in a locked gun safe. There, this goes for toys such as paintball guns pellet or BB guns, you know, etc. All of these things. Glass door and tables need to be taught not to run or play around glass. Stranger danger. It is also important, but more likely someone the child knows uh, that will abduct or harm them physically. So we, we really need to be teaching parents that to, to be aware and teach about stranger danger. Other poisoning, heavy metal occurs from ingestion of a variety of substances. Most common is lead. Uh, these are things in everyday life, th though, that, that may contain lead. Ceramic ware, water, pottery, pewter, dyes, industrial factories, vinyl mini blinds, playground equipment, collectible toys, artist paints, pool, uh, pool cue chalk, you know, the, that you put on the end of your pool cue some imported toys and other ch children's metal jewelry. Increased lead absorption interferes with hematologic, renal, and neurologic symptoms. Uh, we should be screening for it. Does your child live in or regularly visit a house before, uh, uh, built before 1950? Does your child live in or regularly visit a house built uh, before 1978 with the recent or ongoing re renovations or remodeling within the past six months? Does your child have a sibling or playmate who has or had lead poisoning? These are the screening tools that we, or the screening questions we need to be asking them. Atopic dermatitis or ex eczema, uh, we, this is something very common. It's a type of dermatological disease without a specific etiology. It appears to be related to abnormal function of the skin, including alterations in perspiration, peripheral vascular function, and heat tolerance. Pyritic eczema, uh, that usually begins during infancy and may have a genetic factor. The diagnosis is based on history, clinical manifestations. Children typically have a family history of eczema, asthma, food allergies, or allergic rhinitis. Typically, AD will improve in humid weather or climates, but will get worse in the fall and winter when homes are heated and the environmental uh, humidity is lower. There's not a cure. We can only control it. There's three forms of AD, infantile, uh, erythemia, vesicles, papules, weeping, oozing, crusting, scaling, and often it is found to be symmetrically located. That's what it looks like. Uh, with the childhood one, it still is symmetric involvement with clusters of small erythematous or flesh-colored papules or minimally scaling patches, also dry and may be very hyperpigmented. Uh, lack of finication, this is when it's thickened, the skin gets thickened and its prominence is noticed, noted increases. Uh, keratitosis polaris, which is a buildup of keratin in the skin, it makes the skin feel like sandpaper. The adolescent is same as the childhood and then we add to that the dry, thick uh, lesions with uh, confluent papules. In addition, the sufferer will have some intense itching and the unaffected skin will be dry and rough. African American children will likely exhibit more popular, uh, papular or follicular lesions than will white children. Therapeutic management will focus on relieving the symptoms. Goals are to hydrate the skin, relieve the pruritus, prevent the minimal, and minimize flare-ups or inflammation. I instruct parent, parents to avoid exposure to skin irritants or, or allergens. 
avoid overheating, and administer medications <coughs> such as antihistamines, uh, t topical uh, Im immunomodulators, topical steroids, and sometimes some mild sedatives may be necessary. Bathing with a mild soap in a tepid bath or using no soap, and then following up with the emulsifying oil uh, immediately by application. Uh, uh, you want to do that within three minutes of getting them out of the bath. And, and I know this, it, it just sounds like uh, so rushed, but it really will help because it, will, it traps the moisture in and prevents its loss. Aquaphor and Cetaphil. Uh, and Eucerin are acceptable lotions for the skin for hydration. You want to avoid those those nice smelly lotions. At times, adding two cups of cornstarch to a tub or a tub of water, warm water, will provide some temporary relief of itching. It can be pretty intense. Hydroxazine and Benadryl or Benadryl may be necessary to relieve the child of the moderate to severe itching during the daytime. <clears throat> a non-sedating uh, such as Claritin would be beneficial <coughs> Excuse me, to the sufferer. Occasionally when flare-ups are particularly bad, it may be necessary to use topical steroids as well as the immunomodulators. It is necessary to pay particular attention to the skin of these children because with that scratch scratching that can occur, a child would be at risk for secondary in infection, which could require topical and oral antibiotics. Anthropod, arthropod bites and uh, stings, insects, arachnids, mites, ticks, spiders, and scorpions. Scorpions and two spot spiders, the black widow and the brown recluse, are venomous. When bit, they need to seek medical care ASAP. <coughs> um, insect stings, if the stinger remains in, it must be removed. Otherwise, it will continue to push the, the venom into the skin. It'll, it'll just keep pumping. Those who have shown some uh, severe allergic reactions, uh, urticaria, respiratory difficulty, hypotension, uh, they should be carrying an EpiPen uh, for provision of immediate relief. Animal bites, the book goes primarily to discussing dog bites, uh, not really anything else. Uh, it does talk about cat scratch, uh, but cat bites are less common because it, it, the, the cats will typically scratch. Um, but cat scratches may require antibiotics. All treatments going to focus on relieving symptoms and cleaning the wounds, whether it's a cat or whether it's a dog. Human bites, oh, this is so annoying when you have a child in daycare. This is the prime age for human bites. Uh, we want to wash the sites vigorously with soap and water. Uh, if the skin is broken, we want to put some antibiotic ointment on that. Uh, it, it, you know, the human mouth is a, is a dirty place, and, and unfortunately, toddlers have a bad habit of biting. That's the end of your lecture. Um, it is in in just under an hour. This will be uploaded for you via YouTube, uh, um, and watch, uh, uh, and be sure to, to take notes while you listen.